I think the most important thing for us to be in, 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 in our home in his way is to be authorities. And the best way to receive that authority is to respect authority. And your children need to see you respect authority. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I want to ask, what are some things I need to be doing as a father in order to build resilience and an appreciation for order in my family? I'm working on my routine and building a plan for the future, but how do I install this into my son who's nine years old? Should I build a routine around our time together? I didn't grow up with a strong male influence, and so it's something I'm continuing to learn. Is he too young to start developing some idea and habits that will lead him to be a strong, resilient, masculine man? What kind of action should I take that will help? Thanks. So uh, the first thing I will offer you is this, that your example, the way you live your life, the values that you hold dear and the virtues that you express personally mean more than what you say and what you do. You ever hear that? Uh, what you are speaks so loud we can't hear a word you say. There are some people that say all the right things and they, and they posture about doing all the right things, but really when it boils down to it, they're not the thing, right? And that's why tactics and strategies uh, oftentimes pale in comparison to, well, what we're all about here in this King Transformation program being the thing, right? It's not about thinking, it's not about feeling, it's not about doing, it's about being, being the real thing, right? And so that's the first step. And I think you're on your path because you're talking about your routine and you know living, living your best life, doing the best thing that you can do. Now, what I think is really important for family today, especially in the role of the father, it, and because respect is so required, Respect is so lacking in our world today. And a part of the reason why respect is lacking, and I'm going to tell you what I mean about respect and authority in a moment because it's so damn important. But respect is lacking in our world today, mainly because the people who should be respected are just not respectable people. And the reason why they're not respectable people is because they have no authority. They respect no authority. If you don't respect an authority, you can't be respectful and require or uh or attract authority being be an authority and so one of the places where you end up seeing like i've just noticed with some of my friends and people that i know that especially when they have sons the most rightly ordered homes are these men who have been in the military because when you're in the military you understand authority and you understand respect and you don't have bad feelings about it most Americans, particularly millennials, um, and, and a lot of the West in general, we're so anti-authority. We're so anti-respect. We so, we just kind of like want to, um, you know, just denigrate anything that reeks of authority. And that's why we are fatherless, right? Because fathers used to be authority, but there's no fathers. And that's why we're atheists. We have no authority above. There's no father above. There's no God, the father, and there's no father in a home. And so, uh, there, because authority trickles down from above, there's no respectable people. Most people are not freaking respectable. There's not respectable people. But when you're in the military and you're in a way, it's a military is a beautiful thing because on one hand, it's a form of submission Right. Because or even a monk, I think about it this way, both ways, like because when you're a monk, you take a vow of obedience. Right. Think about these guys that live in a monastery. You take a vow of obedience, but same thing with the military. You take a vow of obedience uh, in a way. And when you when you do that, you're submitting yourself to an authority. Right. You're basically you're laying, allowing yourself to be led. But in that act, in that very act, especially in the military, that's hierarchical in that act, you get yourself in line with the trickle down effect of authority and you can raise in the ranks. And if you were a good follower, right, you knew how to submit to authority. You are going to be a better leader. They say that the best leaders were great followers. Have you ever heard that? The best leaders are great followers. And so bringing it back into the secular world, you know, we're not, we, we, maybe you're not in the military, haven't been in the military. And like I was saying, you know, the men that have been in the military, I see them, they carry the same sort of posture into their home, which I think is a beautiful thing. Um, 
and of course you're not a monk, uh, the best way to bring that into, I'm going to say secular, but it isn't secular because I'm going to go religious real quick. <laughs> but the best way to get it, you know, out of the, the military and, and out of the monastery, but bring it into our home, because the home, the home is like a mini, is like a mini monastery. It's like a mini church. It's like a mili, mini military unit. It really is. It really is if it's rightly ordered. But where does your authority come from as a father in the home? God the Father. There has to be, you have to respect an authority. Your children need to see you have reverence towards an authority in your home on a daily basis. When I pray to my children, I think it's so fascinating. I love the fact that we refer to God the Father. Because when I pray with my children every day and I say various prayers, the very first thing, very first word they hear when I pray, when we pray together is in the name of the Father. And I tap my head. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And when I and many of the prayers that I pray refer to the Father. Father. And you know, when I, I talk to Father, talk to God, I talk to the Father. So I'm talking about the, the type of authority that I re, I respect. And when my children see me respect that higher authority and they also see me respect my father these are two super important things because it's about the father it's about the father and the father it's about both fathers when my children see me respect my father and when my children see me respect the father they can't help but respect me as their father you see what i'm saying so i think the most important thing for us to be in in, in, in our home in his way is to be authorities. And the best way to receive that authority is to respect authority. And your children need to see you respect authority. Regardless of, you know, you, you choose, right? I'm Catholic, so I do it this way. But even, you know, when it was, when it was worthwhile, maybe in the 1950s, right? When Americans respected the flag and they respected, you know, American was a, was a, was a strong patriotic nation the children would see the parents respect the flag, respect the country. There was a sense of pride and patriotism. So the children would have that. So that's that. That's my idea on that. You know, I think the most important thing is for your children to see you as an authority. But the only way they're going to see you as an authority and respect you as an authority is if you're respectable and you know how to respect. Everything else from there, everything, because that's being the thing, Right. When we talk about the four quadrants, king, warrior, magician, lover, thinking, feeling, doing, and being, being is up top. Being is all about the father. As we know, it's about the spirit. There's no king without, without access to the spirit, to the spirit world, to God the father, to the king, Christ the king. That's why they call him Christ the king. There is no king. We are not a king unless, we're not a king in our home unless it trickles down from above. And so it's not, a, it's not even a matter of doing once again, just to kind of wrap this up. It's not about doing anything special. It's about being that respectable authority figure, not by shouting, not by forcing, not by uh, f doing anything very overt because everything that you do, let me put it this way. Here's another Emerson. Every action is measured by the sentiment from which it proceeds. Everything you do will proceed from that place of authority. So, you know, what you do does matter, but if you carry that authority and you live your life in a respectable way, you're not going to do stupid things. And I could sit here and I could tell you what to do and what not to do, but it doesn't matter. Those, like, those are tactics and strategies. Who you're being, that's key, bro. And you're here with us in the King program, being a king. So... Your son will have no choice but to wear that crown. He's going to know. He's going to know my father is a king. And a son, sons want to, they want their fathers to mirror them. They want to make their parents happy. Sons want to make, in a rightly ordered home, the son wants the father to, to be proud of him. Me and my dad used to argue a lot when I was a kid because, you know, he grew up old school and I grew up in, this, in America. He grew up in the jungle. And when we were at our, you know, most contentious, I must have been about 14 years old because that's when you start rebelling a little bit. And even then, I wrote him a letter. He showed me, to, he showed me this not too many, you know, a couple of years ago, he showed me the letter I wrote him. And even then, I told him my greatest 
you know, desires to make make him proud. And I said to him, I'm going to make you proud. I'm going to make you proud, Dad. He and, him, he and I used to fight all the time. But because my father carries authority, I would tell him, I want to make you proud. And guess what? I'm 41 years old, and, and it still melts my heart when my father tells me he's proud of me. To this day, my dad's 70 years old, you know. I'm 41 years old. I got all my own kids. When my father tells me he's proud of me, I feel great. And he says it. He tells me he's proud of me. And so that's it, man. That's really, that's, that's the second half of it. I could probably keep going on it, but I won't, is tell your son that you're proud of him. Young men need, need mirroring. They need mirroring. There's too, way too many young men these days that don't have any older men mirroring them, meaning like admiring them, right? Telling them, hey, you're doing a good job, son. Hey, keep up the great work, son. Hey, I'm proud of you, son, when he deserves it. And so that's it, Antonio. I hope that helps, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.